Good morning all. Let's take a look at the items of post which are stacked up in this basket. That's right, it's post basket. So let's start with this one, tool part. It's quite heavy is this. <laughs> That's blunt isn't it? See that knife gets used for all sorts of shed building things now so it's gonna be blunt. Right what's in here? Strips, what they call barrier strips. Gosh, there's quite a lot of them. Mmm. So I bought these because when I bought these, they didn't come with any of the commoning strips. And I've been using these uh, fairly extensively throughout my new workshop for the lighting. And I do use the commoning strips. Now, why did I buy these enormous ones? Well, because actually I tend to break these up. I'll show you. When you buy these commoning blocks, well, they're not commoning blocks, they're... I, I took one apart, didn't I, this one? Um, yeah, they're just straight across terminal strips. When you buy them, you often get these with them, but this was quite a good deal. I got lots of these for quite a good price. I'll show this one as well as these strips. Uh, but they came with no strips, so then I had to buy the strips separately. So let's um, break these off. If you waggle them a few times, they break. Oh, these are quite resilient to that. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a, a good or a bad thing. Yeah, that took a lot of waggling. And then typically I'll take out two of these. Like that one. Gosh, yeah, these are quite tough and that one wrong way around those then come out and actually i do use these because um i'll put a blob of solder on the end solder my wires onto them and they work as the um the wire ends that then go into these terminal blocks and then the commoning strip moves well what i typically have is pos neg pos neg so i have a cable coming in and a cable going out and then in order to get it across to my load which is a light strip i'll put on one of these which will sit something like that for pos and i'll put pos on one side and bend it down in fact the fact that these take a lot of bending to break is good because i have had ones where when i bend it down it feels like it's almost about to break. So let me show you these in situ because that'll probably make more sense. So here I am in the workshop and up there are the lights and you can see here how I've connected them. So you've got a pair of wires coming in, this is the in. You've got the commoning strips which I've broken uh, some of the forks away from so this one distributes pos across to there, that then goes to the light. And then there's a neg strip on the other side of the block. And uh, here are some more of these blocks on my switch and meter panel. So here's one, for example, uh, power comes in here, but I've put on a just two-way commoning strip to get pos down to here to go to Oh, the meter, I think. Yeah, that's it. And uh, here's another one here. This is a four-way, actually. You've got power coming in, power going out, the light strip on there, and another power going out, which goes over to there, and there's another terminal block there. I think you can probably just about see on this one that I've got the POS uh, commoning block on the back there, and the NEG commoning strip on the front so that's what i use these for now let's take a look at them on ebay so these are 12 pieces 400 volt 10 amp 12 position fork relay short circuit strip barrier terminal block which you can use for putting uh, your 12 volts and ground from one side of the block to other four dollars and 99 cents free shipping and these came from strength simone and the terminal blocks themselves were these five pieces 600 volt 15 amp four position barrier strip terminal block 
Now, I got the best deal by buying five lots of five pieces. So I got 25 pieces in total. Uh, $2.28. Now, is that per item? It might be. And there was a $3 shipping charge. And these came from Atom2014, who's currently away until the 30th of October. Right, so we open this box. Uh, one converter. Oh, we know what converter's going to be, don't we? Well, I hope you'd know by now what converter is. And it's this, and this is a new one, or new to me. It's a buck converter, so it takes an input here and transforms it down to a lower DC voltage. But it has a very high input voltage spec. I think it's 75 volts. Uh, let's power it up. Right, in uh, positrons at the top. And I better get the pos and neg the right way around on this thing. Yeah, so this goes upside down. Positrons, why won't that come undone? And at the bottom, negatrons. Now I'm not going to be using its full potential here because the main uh, interesting feature of this one is the high voltage on the input. Interestingly, there's a transformer there. I wonder if that's something to do with the way they get the input side of this to take such a high voltage. Well, let's plug it in and just see if it works. Okay, so they've got it set at um, 5 volts, 3 amps at the moment. I think we're going to have to go to uh, eBay. Well, actually, wait a second. I was just wondering if I could power this light bulb. Uh, let's give that a try. Oh, yes, that fits in there quite well. And actually, it sits off the ground. Oh, that's interesting. Look, there's a big heat sink on the bottom. And the devices, and there appear to be three of them, you can see underneath. Uh, 5 volts, 3 amps. That should be fine. So we've got 5 volts, 1.9 amps. It's going to be about the same as the current going in because that's 12 volts coming in. Well, it's a bit low, actually, 11.2. And this is a 12 volt bulb. But yeah, that certainly seems to work. And the user interface is this um, 4 button and LED interface, which I quite like. I have lots of these power supplies, including that one and uh, this buck boost, which I use quite a lot. So this is the item. It is a digital DC to DC voltage regulator buck converter. It doesn't do boost. 12 amp, 720 watts, step down transformer. Now, there's nothing in the name that gives away the high voltage input. Um, I was just looking through these photos, actually, and this one shows uh, some sort of piece of software where you can both monitor voltage and current and also by the look of it control it but let's go down to the specs now so here they are and the first one is the most interesting to me it's input voltage range 10 volts to 75 volts the output can be up to only 60 volts but the 75 volts is interesting uh, I'll explain why in a moment. Power, uh, current 12 amps, power 720 watts, and it's probably got the additional modes, we can try that in a moment, uh, to show power and I think coulombs possibly, or at least um, amp hours or milliamp hours or watt hours or something. We'll have a look at that. But uh, yes, it was this high input voltage which interested me. Oh, let's go back to the price. Yeah, so this is, uh, well, this one's marked at $28.10. I'm pretty sure I paid $25 something. Shop around. Uh, free shipping. And this one came from so uh, Top Cyber Day. Yes, you may not remember this, but a long time ago I had the idea to transfer power over moderate distances, like from one end side of the garden to the other, by first um, boosting the voltage from, say, a 12-volt battery up to, I don't know, 60 volts, I think was the idea, and then having a buck converter at the other end to bring it back down to something usable like this, 5 volts or 12 volts. 
and I just happened to have been rummaging around and I found this. And this was the 60 volt supposedly input buck converter, synchronous I believe this one is, uh, which I twiddled the pot and it just blew up. So that project went nowhere. But this one's interesting because this is looks like quite a well-built unit. So I should be able to use one of those boost converters to go up to say 60 volts or even 70 because this will take 75 on the input. Bring it back down at the other end of the long piece of wire. Yeah, I'm going to have fun playing with that. Well, that's when it's not raining. Okay, now this thing, I believe you have to press OK and put the power on. Uh, that says P0. Oh, that's not like the ones I remember. What's P0? 1, 36. Oh, 36 doesn't sound right. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Well, this is interesting. In P0, you get 1, 36. That doesn't look like 36 volts to me. And the fan comes on, actually, when I go to that one. Back to P0, back to 1. Uh, if I go to P0, you've got P1, P2, P3, P4. So there's lots of things you can adjust, but I don't know where the menu is where you can control or where you can switch on the power monitoring and stuff like that. I'll try and find it. Now in P4, I found SN-N, or you can go Y. Yes, yeah, so you've got N or Y. That might be the serial. There's... um some serial connections here T G R and V so transmit ground receive and VCC um, and that might be for use in conjunction with that uh, monitoring software this is just going to be a simple serial data interface that's all I found so far the other ones all like, look like they're calibration of some sort but I can't get back to them now uh, of course it's just occurred to me why 1 and 36 isn't putting 36 volts on the bulb and that's because I've only got 12 volts coming in and this is a buck converter so the maximum it can do on the output is whatever's on the input which ain't much 10 and a half volts right I found some more stuff if you go to uh, volts and press and hold you get H which is perhaps time I don't know hours if you go to current amps, press and hold, you get C and that's climbing up. So that could be accumulated charge. I don't know what units. Uh, if you press and hold the left button, because normally, uh, oh, that's the serial yes, no thing. Normally, if you turn it off and press the uh, three amps and five volts, then it'll give you some a row of dashes which says it's memorized it. Well, this doesn't do that. But if you press and hold this button, you've got functions. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> Loads of stuff to play with. Right, I think I found something. Press and hold, function 2. You've got yo 1 and yo 0. I think yo 0 is don't put the output on when you apply power. Yep. Let's go to F2 and Yo1 is do switch the output on when you apply power. That's that. Function 3 I think is the memories. If I go into that you've got naught, and that all goes all the way up to 25 actually. So maybe there are 25 memories. Uh, function 3, function 4. Ooh, E, S, N and Y. So is that the serial? Yes and no. I don't know, but it doesn't seem to show you power as an option. We've only got volts and amps. Interesting. And how do you store changes in the voltage? So if I go up to 5.5 .5 volts, how do I store that? Because it doesn't seem to do it. Uh, if I turn it off now. It comes back at 5 volts, so I haven't worked that out yet. Lots to play with though. Okay, moving swiftly along. One LED bulb. Let's take a look at that. There it is. And there it is. And I can immediately see 
a problem. It's B22 bayonet. And I don't really want B22 bayonet because I've settled on E27 27mm Edison screw for the bulbs in my workshop. That's a problem. I'll just borrow this connector from here so that I can power it up. All right, let's give it a try and see if it's um, sort of bipolar as it were. Oh yeah, that's quite nice. Does it work the other way around? Yep, so it must have a bridge rectifier in here. You can put it in either way around. Actually, that would have to be the case for B22, of course. Um, this is 12 volts, though, so don't get confused and shove 240 volts through it. Is that plastic? Yeah, that's plastic. Um, with the E27, of course, you can only connect them one way around. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? So this is the item, and it very clearly says B22 there. And in the selection boxes, B22, 6 watts, DC, 12 volts, uh, soft white, so warm white, I think that is. Vintage, E27 or B22, LED Edison bulb, 3 watt, 4 watt, or 6 watt, and all the other stuff, either 12 volts or mains, of course. Um, £3.35, yes, I think I paid in pounds on this one. Free shipping from China, Ranpo Lighting Mall. Now, you may have noticed that I wasn't entirely surprised that this was a B22, and that envelope was actually already open. I'm sure you spotted that. So, I'm now going to open this because this is the solution to my error. It's not a completely foolproof solution. But yeah, because I bought a B22 and I wanted E27, I bought some B22 to E27 adapters. Uh, I got three, just in case I... Oh, that's a bit manky, isn't it? But that does fit. Just in case I make the same mistake again. Can I bridge that across there? Yes, I can. So they were the solution. Let's check those out on eBay. I think these came from a UK seller. So this is the item that corrects the problem. Screw ESE27 to bayonet BCB22 converter light bulb fitting. There were lots of these the other way round, but I found it quite tricky finding them this way round to turn an E27 into a B22 for a B22 bulb. Uh, this guy had a buy two, get one free, which is why I bought the three. £2.49 uh, free shipping. And these came from Satco UK Deals. The only downside, of course, is that this makes it longer. So the bulb is going to hang lower from the ceiling. And the ceilings already aren't that high because the maximum height I could build to the workshop to was 2.5 metres. That's uh, under permitted development rules. And it seems all my friends are tall. Why are they tall or am I short? But anyway, uh, yes, that's the only downside. These are going to hang quite low, so I'm going to have to position them quite strategically, I think. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB, who are a fantastic company to work with. They really are. And also a big thanks to my Patreon patrons. If you want to become a patron, you can click this link here. More videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff and subscribe to the channel using this link here. Cheerio.